Welcome to another bloody review for the Bloody Asylum. I'm Craig Rosenthal. And I'm Matt Anderson. Today we are going to be covering the 1984 cult film from Fred Olin Ray, Biohazard. This is his first 35mm project and the movie is pretty much a very poor ripoff of Alien. 35mm, his first 35mm film? What was he filming on before then? You don't want to know. I do actually, I wouldn't have asked a question if I didn't <laughs> want to know. Fred Owen Ray is known for making some really bad movies. For you out there, he's done Scalps, He's done The Alien Dead. These are before Biohazard, but he has also gone on to have a very long career in low-budget movies. And his son, who is even one of the stars of this movie, plays the alien in this film. He was only five years old at the time. But his son also has gone on to direct a number of movies for the Sci-Fi Channel. So, without further ado... Okay, but you still haven't answered my question. Though. What did he film his other movies on if this is his first 35mm film? Oh boy. We'll be back after the movie is over. Biohazard just wrapped up, and why don't you tell us what your thoughts were on it first, Matt? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um... Fred Olin Ray is well known in the community for making lots of movies, from what I understand. Um... Mostly horror and science fiction, and then all pretty, pretty low end. <laughs> Uh, it was an experience, uh, not soon forgotten. Get to the point. Why are we here, Dr. Williams? The first thing about the movie that struck me is there's a lot of driving in this movie. Oh, yeah. The first 30, 35 minutes of the movie is just a lot of driving in the desert. Yeah, I mean, it's, they have this one army truck, and you know, it's obviously, you know, we bought, we rented the truck, we're gonna film the truck. Uh, because the generals, and first of all, even in the 1990s, generals would not be riding any bright orange <laughs> Jeep. What are those idiots doing? Hit the horn. They would be riding in a very, either a blue or green colored Dodge, uh, completely enclosed with air conditioning, uh, not in some, some, not in the, somebody on the cast's big red Jeep. Um, so that was the first thing. There's a lot of driving in it. I mean, more driving than uh, <laughs> Ballistic X versus Sever ever had. <laughs> Uh, although they have the distinction of doing the most driving scenes backwards. So bizarre. But yeah. regardless of that, then the next thing you see is you see the only one of two females, so this is a very male-dominated film. Uh, the female is Sheena from the episode of Star Trek where Captain Kirk's on the, the, the Triskelion planet and she's the one in the space bikini. I beg your pardon. Yellow. The sun. The card is the sun. You're right. You're right again. This is ridiculous. Well, anyways, so she's in this movie, uh, and if you've ever wanted to know what was underneath the space bikini, don't you worry. There is at least one scene, and only one scene, that shows you what you've been missing. Um, and then 
the only other female in it, in it of course, naturally is also topless because mm -hmm. from what I understand, Fred Nolan Wade does porn now, so you can definitely see the seeds of his porn destiny <laughs> at the very beginning of this movie. I didn't come 500 miles to see this kind of freak show nonsense. Well, you must admit, she does have something going here. So, you know, I mean, granted, Star Trek was still not exactly, you know, high-budgeted TV series, but still, you know, to go from that to Biohazard, <laughs> that's a huge step backwards. Um, well, she did, they, I, looking up her filmography, she was in uh, one of the Blood Island uh, the horror films from the late 60s, which is very much in the low-end, grindhouse, B-movie range. Not good stuff either. I mean, fun, but not good. Oh, well, yeah. Well, and uh, and then the whole movie, it's... <laughs> Uh, the fact that the director's son, his five-year-old son, is in the suit, and it's very obvious they just gave the kid, put the kid in the suit, gave him a crap ton of Kool-Aid, and said, RUN! Scenes. I don't think they're fighting. I said, okay, give your Uncle Johnny a hug. Uncle Johnny! <laughs> uh, so, you know, you've got, you got minimal nudity uh, in, in this bad film. In the beginning of point, you see this little kid running around. <laughs> uh, the, the dialogue is... <laughs> Stupid. The the acting is weak. There are at least two characters chewing gum constantly through the movie. Uh, and the special effects are uh, weak. <laughs> In the, uh, in the in the in the in the bass in the extreme, they are weak. You're watching this movie, and then they introduce a big plot twist. At the very end. At the very end, and then the actor who's in it, he's just like, "Yeah, I think that's enough. Cut." I think that's it. And then it goes to the credits. And then a blooper reel. <laughs> yeah. And a horror film. Horror films don't have blooper reels, you know? Well, the cop that murder was the first degree. Jesse says, don't make nothing to me. It's not like you see Jeff, you know, Freddy going, I'm going to skin you and, and, and line. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or Jason sitting there going, okay, do I want me to hit her on the head with the machete or do I want to uh, stick it in her tummy? It, it felt, de it, w once when the ending came and the blooper reel came on during the credits, it felt as if Fred Olin Ray and his crew knew the exact kind of movie they were making and that they, even by the end of it, realized that we can't, they, we're going to stop trying. Billy Rumble Rock, Billy Rumble Pop, Billy Rumble Rock. We're just going to stop even trying to carry this movie out any further and just make people laugh at the absurdity of it all by the end of it. That's how it came across, because it was bad through all the way through, but that blooper reel at the end definitely helped to, to make it, it sitting through the entirety of it a little more worth it. 30 Apple Dog, take two. Well, you're the best cook around here in these parts. You know, the real trick to my culinary activity is to, that I've acquired, you know, the real activity, you know, the real trick, you know, the real trick to my culinary ability to, that I acquired, you know, the real trick, you know, the real trick to my, Yeah, it, it definitely, and answer the blue rule also answered one of the most penetrating questions we had about the movie, was she wearing a wig? <laughs> and yes, <laughs> Miss Petty John was, was wearing a wig. Yes. And, uh, you know, it just, I, I mean, 
really, for seeing for this first movie, um, for, for, the, for my first Fred Olin Ray movie, I definitely don't know if I'm going to be able to stomach watching another one. Anybody who do movies like that, I admire, you know, Fred Olin Ray, I admire Roger Corman, um, you know, I admire even Robert Rodriguez when he first started, you know, the low budget, they try to do their best, John Carpenter, you know, and some rise to the challenge and others go into porn. And uh, so I think, you know, Fred Olin Ray must have at some point during this movie or one of the many other movies realized. Um, yeah, porn would probably be a better fit for my uh, directorial style. And so, uh, so you went on to that, and hey, more power to him, you know? Um, you know. Uh, yeah, the guy is, it, he's still making movies to this day, and, and I don't know if he's actually making uh, any more movies like this, but I know a majority of the stuff is your late night, you know, softcore uh, porn. He's worked with numerous porn actresses, uh, and... Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely found his niche at this point. So and more power to him uh, because if he's doing that, then he's saving us from having to have more movies like Biohazard. Um, oh. But uh, but I would not recommend um, Biohazard for anybody. Uh, it's just it's. I mean, MST3K on Netflix, if you don't do one of his movies, if you haven't done one already, you need to do this movie, really, um, because this is just right. We were riffing all the way through the movie. There was absolutely, at no point did we take the movie seriously. You can't. And, yeah, you can't, and yeah. There were actually parts where we would miss what was going on, went back, and still weren't lost. <laughs> and then uh, some of the, the, the funniest part is um, the decisions that makes some of the cast makes or the characters make are dumb, but what was really just made me die laughing was the this alien artifact. It's obviously made out of cardboard and tape. Oh, yeah, clearly. Yeah, it's clearly. just, I mean, I mean. Some artifact. Here. Okay, now I'm going to try to hammer it back to size. Now step back. Yeah, you know, it, the whole movie is just, it's, it's a train wreck. One interesting tidbit of information that I, I wanted to share was something that you raised was one of the, the two people that uh, worked on the score of the movie. Oh, yeah. Well, Drew Newman, who um, is not really well known uh, as some of the, uh, you know, some other people, but he worked on uh, Evil Dead. And uh, another thing that he did, he did the music for uh, the Aeon Flux animated series that uh, aired on MTV, Personal Liquid Television, then got its own series. And I'm a fan of Drew Newman. And you definitely hear some of it in, in the mix of the really bad 80s... Uh, Rockabilly at the very end. Now, that, I, that That's was not, not him. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. I, the, yeah the, the ending, along with the bloopers, is this... The, uh, an entirely uh, different entity. Yeah, it's a yeah. song that has no place in it, but it works great for a blooper. But even then, it just started getting annoying. <laughs> well, it's stuck in my head right now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean oh... <laughs> I, I, like I said before, I cannot recommend Biohazard to anybody. Um, there is an absolute, I cannot see any, any appeal that this movie would have to anybody other than you wanted some background noise or you want to see um, uh, Miss Pettijohn's boobs. That's about all I can really recommend about this movie. 
Um, I, I would say that if you're looking for a bad movie, then you can't go wrong with Fred Olin Ray. Um, just pick any of his movies from this era and you're going to be, you're going to be pretty much railroaded with, with just one bad piece of dialogue, piece of editing. I mean, heck, there was a boom mic. Hopping back. Oh, what's in there anyways? It's Randolph's steamer trunk. Hopping back. Oh, what's in there anyways? It's Randolph's steamer trunk. <laughs> hanging clear as day in the, yeah, in it's the right over frames. here it's just like you know it's just, it's just like and and you see they're trying to get it out but apparently whoever is it is lacking in upper body strength because it kept dipping in and they're trying to oh my well, look, and that it, was during the filming of the driving scenes yes what i was gonna say was is that there's as we were talking before, uh, we were talking much earlier about Fred Olin Ray, and I was saying, I don't, I grew up watching these movies, and I can't even tell you exactly what the appeal is, because they're bad movies. But damn, I end up watching these movies still to this day. I have no idea why. They're terrible films, but there's something about them, something about Fred Olin Ray that has some sort of charisma that that keeps me coming back to say hey it's a Fred Olin Ray movie I'm gonna put this on and every single time I'm just like oh geez why am I torturing myself like this but I, I just don't know what to say you know there's many of us out there that that admire this guy probably admire him for all the wrong reasons <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I, I like I said. I'm, I don't think I will ever watch, or if I do, it will just because probably for another review like this, because uh, there are so many bad movies out there, and his movies are just on the on the edge of of bad. I mean. They're not Bloody Mallory bad. Um, That's a different sort of bad. This is yeah. a little more self-aware. Yeah, I like, mean, I would definitely would say that he, he, he was aware of what he's doing, obviously because of the ending. So um, so he's obviously not, and he's found his niche. So, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't waste your time on this movie um, unless you are a part of the f uh, cult of Fred Olin Ray, and then uh, you should absolutely have a blast with it then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's a fair assessment uh, of any one of his movies. Is as long as you know what you're getting into, it's Fred Owen Ray. That's all you need to know. <laughs> it says so right there at the beginning. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for this segment, and I don't know if this is going to turn you off to watching Biohazard or whether it's going to make you actually now seek the film out. But regardless, we hope that you got something out of the review. My name is Craig Rosenthal. And I'm Matt Anderson. Thank you again.